Hello everyone, welcome back to Crafts by the Bow. Today I'm going to use more of the free celebration paper. And if you caught my Facebook Live replay, um, you will have seen that I made this simple little card on Tuesday. And I used these two papers. And I'm going to make a card using exactly the same paper. So the one that I loved with the little birds on and the tree one. And this paper, let me show you, it's called Rings of Love and it's in the celebration catalogue that started on the 1st of July and it goes all the way through until the end of August. And it's one of the ones that if you spend $60 on any order, you can buy paper pumpkin um, subscriptions, you can buy from the clearance racks, you can buy from the annual catalogue or the um, July to December catalogue. And whatever you choose to use it on. But once you spend $60, you can choose something from this book. And it's this paper. Um, and when I saw this paper on Tuesday, I hadn't realised it had this tiny, tiny little picture here. And a bit bigger picture here, but it totally passed me by. I didn't see how pretty it really was. So I'm going to use that paper again. And I'm going to make... Um, a book binding card and you might have seen me use the make these before I usually make them landscape so they will be like this and the fold will be here with a little piece and you open the flap but for today I'm going to make it portrait and I don't think I've done a, a video on making it portrait before so it's going to be just a half sheet of card you make a score line and then glue this down and then you open it just like a little book. And you can put the little holes in, tie a ribbon through, lots of little ways to jazz it up, but I'm going to show you the basic one right now. So I'm going to get my paper, but I'm gonna score my card first. And I've put all my measurements on here. If you go over to my blog later today, I will have put down all the things that I've used. This is just um, like a card cutting guide. It doesn't show you everything I've used. And I'm going to use Purpose As. I don't have very much of this left, so it's nearly time to go on reorder, I think. And I'm just going to cut it at eight and a half by five and a half. So all I have to do literally is cut it on the long side at five and a half. And that gives you just half a sheet of cardstock, and that's really all we need. So I'll pop that down, and then I'm going to turn it horizontally so I've got the long side looking at me. I'm going to score at three and a quarter, and I'm using my trimmer because I have the two guides on. I have the darker one is the cutting blade, and this one is just the scoring blade. So I'm going to score at three and a quarter, and again at four and a quarter. And while I'm here, I'm going to cut my design series paper as well. I need a little piece of white card for inside, so let's cut that next. And it needs to be five and a quarter by three. Oops. So I need to trim this down because it is just a little bit long. I only need it to be five and a quarter. There we go. And I don't need that little scrap. And then my design series paper, I want this one to be on the front of the card. So I, I want that to go here. And then we need a little strip for down here. And I'm not going to use the same paper, I'm going to use a different pattern. But I want this one for the big piece, so I have to be mindful that it's a, a one-way pattern. If it doesn't matter, you, know, you can cut it however you want. But when it's a one-way pattern, I always have to remember that the smaller um, measurement the three inch measurement is going to go across the top so I'm just going to cut this down at three like that pop that piece away and then I'm going to make it five and a quarter and you could check to see which of the birds you wanted um, I'm going to turn it that way actually just because I've got birds right at the top here I'd like to be able to see those okay so there's my three and a three by five and a quarter and I need another piece five and a quarter by three quarters and for that one I'm going to use the tree trunky one okay. 
So let me just see. I'm going to cut it at five and a quarter. And then because I only need a three quarter inch piece, I just want to be aware of which piece I've got. It's such a narrow piece. I don't want to have just a stick like that or, you know, so it doesn't look like it's a tree. So let me just see what that would give me. Oh, that would be okay because I would get like two half tree trunks there and some branches. So that would work for me. So there's my three quarters of an inch one. Mm, actually, I don't quite like having that thick one. Let me just see if I can get something better. So three quarters. Yeah, that's a bit better. I can see that it's a tree now. Okay, and I'm also going to cut an extra piece and I'll show you what that's for in a few minutes. I'm going to cut it again at three. So here where I've put, you can add a second piece inside. That's what I'm cutting now, but I'll show you as we go along. That's not for the front, it's for inside. And then I'm gonna pop that one away. I'm gonna keep that one. I don't need my trimmer anymore. I do need a little scrap of the same card um, in Purpose As and a little scrap of white, but I've actually already cut those. So I've used a little piece of basic white and I've used these scalloped contours for the smallest die, this one. And I've cut the Purpose As in the stitched rectangles and I think that's the second one in. Let me just see, yeah, it is. It's this second one here. But you can use whichever die cuts or punches, whatever you have. It certainly doesn't have to be a rectangle. And I'm using the Beauty of Friendship stamps and I'm going to use this one, You Truly Inspire Me. So I might just do my stamping first and that would give it enough time just to dry. I'm gonna get my stamping, my piercing mat just to do the stamping with. So I don't have much paper left on my pad here, so it's not as cushiony as I would like it. Let's pop that there. I do already have my stamp on my clear block and I'm using a photopolymer stamp set. I like these ones because it means you can see right through. I love our red cling stamps as well, but with the photopolymer, it means you can see right through. And when I'm just stamping onto a small piece, I want to make sure that I've got it level and I've got it in the middle. So early espresso. Ooh. Okay, and I'm just going to move it down and I realize it won't be in your eyesight, but just let me move it down and turn it around. So now you should be able to see it. And just tap lightly and then I'm gonna try and just without you just seeing only my head I'm just gonna stamp it there okay that's just perfect that's in the middle and it's straight and I can't ask for any more than that okay pop that little mat back and we don't need the stamp box anymore so let's start to assemble I'm going to pop that just over here so that it's drying and then here's our card base and you can see it's got that three and a quarter score and a four and a quarter score. The four and a quarter score is going to be the halfway point. So I'm just going to fold it over and I'm going to burnish it just with my bone folder. And then this piece I'm going to fold it backwards on itself. I'm going to burnish it again so you get that book fold shape and this is going to glue down. So I'm going to open it all the way up and I'm going to put glue on just this one inch strip. I'm going to use my wet glue, my liquid glue. But you can use any adhesive that works for you. I'm going to make sure I've got some up near the edges so that it sticks and it's not sort of opening up down and I'm going to go over it with my bone folder. Ooh. Oh, what have I got on here now? Look. Oh, I maybe had some ink on there, but that's okay because I'm going to put over a piece of design series paper. Okay. It might even erase off with a glue eraser if I was worried about it. Oh, it does look. It comes right off. 
There we go. Okay. So I don't think it was ink. Okay. All right. And if you wanted to stamp something on the inside here, now would be your time to do it. You could stamp a sentiment. Um, I might put a little bit more paper on, actually. I had some little scraps. This would fit just over here. So I'm just going to trim off one little bird. You could make this you know, as wide as you wanted. And I think, is that three inches? Yeah. So that's just a perfect size. I'm going to pop it just on the bottom of my white piece. a little gap at the bottom. I like it when you have that little tiny piece of white as well. Oops, let's make it straight. There we go. Now let's attach that to the inside of our card. Pop that in here. And there we go. So that gives you a nice little pattern on the inside as well. Okay, so let's go back to doing the front. We know our birds are going to go here on the right hand side. And where did I put my tree? There it is. This is going to go just on here. And you can tell each has got just a nice little um, border around. Let me use my, my stamping seal here. This right in the middle. You make sure that your borders level sort of left and right and top and bottom. There we go. And then the same with the little birds. There we go. Okay. Now you remember I cut that edge piece. I quite like a piece of designer series paper on the inside as well. You certainly don't have to. You could cut another piece of white if you wanted a, a larger message or more stamping. But I quite like a designer series paper that matches the very narrow piece that we added in. Now, as I say, you really don't have to do this. It's just a little added extra. Just a little surprise when you open your card and you have that little piece there as well. Okay, now our stamping is dry and so I'm going to attach it to the little piece of purple zazz that we had. Pop this on here. And I used my liquid glue just so that I could move it along a bit and make sure it was exactly centered. And then, oh, I don't want those ones. I'm just going to get some of my dimensionals. I knew I had one little sheet left with a couple of pieces on. I'm going to pop these like this along the middle. Pop that one back. Take the backings off. And then I'm just going to add this just down here near the bottom and you could add it the top in the middle but I'm going to add it near the bottom and remember there's that cheeky little bird that I fell in love with on Tuesday so I'm going to pop this right down here okay. now if you wanted to embellish this some more you could add some rhinestones on here like I said you could um, punch holes here tie a ribbon through that looks really nice if you didn't want to punch holes you could um, just tie a ribbon and attach it on here with a glue dot but it's a, a very versatile little card and you can make it your own so there we are that's my card for today and it's sort of a matching set for this little card that I made on Tuesday so I hope you enjoyed that I hope you'll give it a go check my blog for all the things that I use the colors and the cardstock and everything and if you've got any questions, as always, just send me a message or ask, ask on the YouTube and I can just reply and let you know what I used. 
Okay, everybody, have a great weekend and I'll see you all again next week. Take care. Bye-bye.